I'll just, there's a fly in here. <laughs> oh my word, this lighting is so bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this light. Hmm, we better fix that. Ooh, that's brighter. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish, if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. How are you? How are you for real? I uh, would love to hear how you guys are doing, what's been going on over your summer. Some of you are probably finding me for the very first time. I took a little break over the summer. It was really like a mental health break. It started out, and then for a while I didn't know if I was coming back. Basically, I like baked sourdough, my house was clean. Poor John with me coming back to work is probably like, oh man, that was so good. <laughs> I'm still bad. I am going to ease into a new schedule. I don't know what it's gonna look like, so I'm not gonna say yet. I'm just going to kind of play it by ear until I figure out what makes sense. Um, there is some stuff going on outside of our little family, but still in my family that I'm gonna be involved in for the foreseeable future. I don't know how long. And that is gonna involve me traveling. My, it's about, it's, it has to do with my dad. He is about three hours away on the other side of the state and I'm gonna be going back and forth, um, sometimes on short notice probably for a little while. We don't know how long. We don't know everything yet. <laughs> so, I guess if you pray or if you meditate and or send me good thoughts or whatever you do, I can use them, he can use them, my whole family can use them right now. I also feel like so much so many of us have been through similar things. Again, I don't want to give all the details. It's really not my story to tell, but um a lot of us have been through similar things to what I'm about to go through with my family and what they're about to go through. So many of you understand and I just really appreciate all the kind words. A couple of you have reached out, just thank you very much. Also know there probably are gonna be times where I don't have the emotional bandwidth, if you will, <laughs> to talk about it if you reach out and I just might not be able to answer right then. But it doesn't mean I don't appreciate it. It doesn't mean I don't read it. It's just sometimes it's like that. During this break though, I have done a ton of dyeing and um, John has been working, this was before the break, John has been working an extra 20 hours a week on his own business. So he's working like 60 hour weeks consistently for months and he is, um, He's trying to take breaks when he can. He loves what he's doing, so it's really good, but it's also a lot. So yesterday or the day before, I was like, hey, do you wanna do some dyeing with me? He really likes it. He enjoys like just the creativity of it. It's a totally different kind of creativity from what he does day to day. I was like, hey, do you wanna go out in the studio and dye some fiber with me or yarn? And he was like, just pick out whatever you want and I'll dye some and you can dye some and we'll film it. So we're going to, um, but like I said, there's been a ton of dyeing going on. A bunch of you guys have been buying stuff from the shop. Thank you, I'll be honest, the shop is part of the reason why I did come back because it's kind of like you guys showed me you didn't forget me. <laughs> People were still checking it even though I was pretty quiet and buying stuff and I just appreciate the support. I appreciate also being able to continue to be creative and not like have to keep it all because I can't keep it all you guys, that would be crazy. I think I'm gonna take Corydale out for us to dye today. First I need to hang up some of that BFL mix, that tan natural colored BFL that's um, blended with silk. I need to hang them up. I actually, let me show you guys. A lot of you guys have seen my grungy dye towels. These do get washed. They just don't look at like it because the dye continues to get deposited. I rolled all this stuff up yesterday and there is also yarn in here for Elvis's sweater. And oh, I forgot. I also dyed yarn for Dolly's sweater. Let's go see how it looks because I need to see if that needs more dye. The sweater that I'm gonna knit for both of them is called the Botanical Yoke Sweater. Oh, 
that's pretty close to what I wanted. So both of them I dyed like a tonal. Um, his is kind of a, I was going for a sapphire blue. It didn't get quite as deep as I wanted it to be, but I'm still pretty happy with it. I guess we'll wait and see if it dries and I don't love it. <laughs> Just um, throw it back in the dye pots, but I think I'm gonna be okay with it. Hers isn't quite where I was trying to go, so I am going to add some dye. I'll show you what I'm doing with hers just because I'm here and this is what I'm doing right now. First, we gotta get that other stuff. Do I wanna do that first? Mm -hmm. No, I think we're gonna do this first. What I wanna do with hers is actually give it a like light charcoal dip over that kind of berry color because I wanna deepen it a little bit. So I just turned on my, um, my little electric kettle for those who think Americans don't use them. We have two. <laughs> and I'm going to use some Jacquard Silver Gray to like make a new bath. And I will throw this berry colored yarn into a gray bath to over dye it. It's going to be cool. While I'm waiting for the kettle to boil, I'm going to hang up the stuff that's been rolled up in the towel. So here's, this is gonna be for Elvis's sweater. Ooh, it looks brighter in this light than it actually is. This light is so awkward, hang on, let me turn it. Here we go. So it's a brilliant blue. Like I said, I just meant it to be a little deeper, but I am pretty happy with it, so I think I'm gonna leave it. Okay, I'm just gonna get the last little bit hung up and then I'll see you in the dye studio. I am nervous about this. I was when I started it because I use two different colors that are hard to exhaust in this and it didn't fully exhaust. That doesn't mean it won't, but if you ever have this problem, it has um, heated up, I think the burners go for two hours and then they turn off, and then allowed to cool at its own pace. So that helps a lot of the dye come up, but it's still, you can see there's still some pink in the water. It's not the end of the world, especially for a dog sweater that's not gonna, oh, that is closer than I thought. I'm happy with that, but I'm not quite there. So, in order to help it get a better chance at fully exhausting, I am actually gonna add some citric acid to this water. I just ordered a new five pound bag, it just got here, of citric acid. And I'm gonna turn on the burners. Sorry, they, they have a fan, so it's gonna make a little noise. And I'm gonna stir in this acid really quickly. Just dissolve it in the water. So for anybody who doesn't know what's going on, I pre-soak my yarn, or I did for this anyways. I don't always, but I did. Um, in citric acid water, but then when the dye goes in, it goes into plain water. So really the only acid left is what's on the yarn. So if I add acid to this water, the hope is that it's going to help the yarn suck up that and attach that last little bit of dye. But I'm also going to add some gray. So this all could go, I mean, I'm not going to say wrong because the worst thing that happens is I have to rinse it a bunch of times and then make sure I wash her sweater all by itself, which I probably will anyway. So that's one of the reasons why I was like, I'm going all out. Um, let's just mix a little bit of the gray dye and we'll add it to this pan. If you're going to do this, please wear a mask. For just this one thing, I'm not going to bother, but I do have one and wear one. It is right here. So there are four hanks of that yarn in there. I 
I always tap my spoon to try to get all the dry dye off the spoon. So that was um, water out of the kettle. It just boiled a minute ago. Making sure it's all dissolved in the hot, hot water. And then I'm gonna rinse off my tongs and add a little cold. I'm scared that I have too much dye, but we're doing it anyway. I've had a lot of challenge with one of these colors. Um, I won't, probably won't buy it again. I've been kind of playing with it to see like what can I add it to. It's a long story. We will talk about it sometime. Okay, so now I'm gonna dip, take these and dip them back in. And I'm gonna flip them. I'm gonna dip them all the way in. But I'm still holding on to the zip ties. I'm gonna flip them. Oh, they already started to take that gray out. Okay, good. So good. That is great. And now I'm gonna try and get them all the way under. This is a, a six inch deep pan, in case you're wondering. It is nicer if you wanna kind of like use one of these pans to kettle dye, it's, it's nicer. And when John and I come out to dye it, um, our stuff will check it. Wish me luck. Hopefully this is all it's gonna take. Okay, if you see something on my shirt, it's just water I splashed myself, but full disclosure, I did have to change my shirt to come out here and film. Your girl has not changed one bit. I had dropped tomato on my shirt while I was eating earlier. Garden tomato though. These are the six inch pans and I fill them about half full, a little bit more than half full is my goal. And what I'm gonna put in each pan is two pounds. When John does this, he does it the smart way. He puts the citric acid in the pan first so that while he's filling it, it's starting to dissolve. I always forget, always. I buy the citric acid and it comes in a, a Ziploc bag, but I'm always afraid it's gonna spill. So I put it in <laughs> one of these containers. And as you can see, it is labeled very clearly. It's not dangerous. Citric acid is like the same thing in lemons. So it's it won't like hurt you or hurt your skin or anything, but just so I know what it is, it's labeled very clearly. And then what they tell you is you need one tablespoon per pound of fiber. But I have found that I like about half again that much. So there'll be two pounds in each of these. That would be two tablespoons, but like I said, I like half again as much. So I do three tablespoons of citric acid in each pan. So I'm just gonna stir it because it's kind of like crystal and you just want them to dissolve in the water. Eight, okay, so that's the first eight. I've been debating with myself, like, should I do um, yarn for John? Because he loves doing sock yarn, but I'm going to go ahead and do fiber for both of us. Okay, so this is my least favorite part. It doesn't, like, just slide off of these. I use my bare hands. It, again, the citric acid is not going to hurt you. You just need to immerse it and try to squeeze the water out. Or the air out, I mean. Duh. Sometimes in the winter, when it's cold and this water is cold, I'm just like, I don't want to. And we're gonna each take one of these pans and dye it. We did not talk about a theme today, so they could be very different, but that's kind of fun. 
we're, we're out here to do the dyeing, but the first thing I need to do is check this yarn. I'm really kind of worried that the pink didn't all take up, but let's check it anyway. Uh, no, see? One of the colors I used in here was <clears throat> Pro Chem's Rotomine Red, and it, I just can't get it to exhaust sometimes. And it's a little frustrating, but that's why I tested it on something that was a sweater for the dog. Because, oh, <laughs> sorry, because I'm just trying to figure out what I have to do, and I can't seem to get it right. So I'm going to take this and rinse it, and then we're going to start dyeing.
Okay, these are all dry now. And I'm gonna show you the two that I did. John's gonna come in and talk about the ones that he did because I like him to explain what his thought process was behind the dyeing. So I am actually working on more of the Blacklight Reactive dye schemes. I've been pl playing with those dyes to see what I can do mixing and stuff like that. So this is one and it's not a gradient. It's not a true gradient, but it's just four color shift throughout the fiber. And I did like a crochet chain instead of a braid. So you can see the color shift better. Um, I like this one. I mean, this is actually the kind of thing that I really like, but I did mean for this to be more of an orange. I accidentally dropped another color in there and now it's kind of a, I don't know what kind of red you would call it, but it's more of a red really. Oh, and here's the last one. This one did come out the way I wanted it to. Not that I don't like the other one, but that orange wasn't what I was trying to do. It's very similar to Sinister Kiss, but Sinister Kiss was blacker on this end and instead of gray, which I did go for gray. and. Again, this one is black light reactive. Both of these are. And one of the things I've been playing with is making the black light color that's gonna react totally different from the color that you'll see with the regular lights on. I just think that's kind of cool and magical. So if that's your thing, these two are for you. Actually, I have to send one of these away. Um, so there will be three of each in the shop. We'll start oh, with- Oh, you wanna do that? Okay. I'll we'll start with this one. Um, my inspiration on this one, we were coming back from town the other day and we passed by a nursery <laughs> and uh, they had all their fall mums out. So I did an over dye with a shamrock color and then added pink and purple, gold to mimic mums. <laughs> it's cool though. <laughs> This one I really had no inspiration. I just started with blue steel and added some added some purples to it. I love that one. Cause you know sometimes I'm just a fly by the seat of your pants kind of person, and that's definitely what I did with this one. <laughs> sometimes those turn out the best, and sometimes they just turn out okay. No, I think it's awesome. I love this one. I might keep one. What? There's four of them, so. Yay. I mean, there's only three in the shop. Yeah, there's only three now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Bye, everybody. <laughs> and I wanted to talk to you guys about something else while I get the stuff ready to go in the shop. I've been thinking a lot because of the break that I took, which was wonderful about just kind of like what's going on with everybody right now. And John and I talked about it the other day and I don't want to give up my shop. I don't want to quit dyeing wool. I love doing it. At the same time, shipping gets more and more expensive and so do all the supplies. People are raising their prices. People are going out of business all over the place and I have to pay to keep my shop open. So I've thought about it and thought about it. <laughs> He and I had a conversation about it the other day. I've decided to go against the grain, which will surprise probably no one, and lower the prices in my shop permanently, at least for the foreseeable future. Yes, it means I will make less profit, and that's fine, um, but I need to keep my shop open. If I can make it a little easier for people to afford the nice fiber that they want, maybe we can do each other a favor that way, right? So I'm gonna lower the prices in the shop on every everything. I would say you guys kept me in business enough to afford to keep it open, so thank you. I do appreciate that because I don't really want to lose it and give it up. I love you guys. I hope you are having a wonderful late summer, early fall, depending on where you are, the weather can be a little different. And um, I need to get all of this. <laughs> listed before you see this video. I really appreciate all the messages, all the emails, DMs, and everything. I did not answer everything because I was kind of taking a break 
from like social media and everything. So if I didn't answer you, I am sorry, but I did read everything and I really appreciate it. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So I hope you're getting crafty and I will see you very soon. Thanks. I love you. Bye.